For better or worse, the watch enthusiast community tends to spend about 95% of the time discussing the same five to 10 brands. And although there isn't anything necessarily wrong with this, a big reason why I love watch collecting is just the variety of watches that you have to investigate so you can ultimately decide what is the best watch for you and express yourself in the process. So what I wanna do in this video is look at seven brands that I would classify as overlooked and are brands that should be on your radar. At least maybe you should investigate a little bit further for appreciation. This is not intended to be a comprehensive list of watches from each brand, but more a quick synopsis of some select names in the industry that are worthy of attention, in my opinion, while mentioning a couple of the watches that might might be a good place to start if you're intrigued. In addition to this list though, if you want a snapshot of the Swiss watch industry looking at over 50 brands that make up an important aspect of the whole, we have a comprehensive article listing out brands that you should know in the Swiss watch world. We have over 53, I believe, the last time I checked on that list, so a lot to get lost in. Very comprehensive article, just at least as a jumping off point for understanding the different brands out there in the Swiss watch world. This video though will not just be Swiss watch brands, just as a disclaimer. Now for our first brand on the list, we have a brand that is a part of a larger structure with the Swatch Group, which you might be saying, why are they on this list? But I think there's a good reason why, and this is a brand around $1,000 that I think is severely overlooked, and that is Certina. Now, Certina was founded way back in 1888 by a pair of brothers, Adolf and Alfred Kurth, in Grenchen, Switzerland. While it's not necessarily well known, especially in the United States, the brand does exist on the radar of many vintage dive watch fans for its association with Tektite, an underwater habitat project back in 1969, as well as its use by the Royal Australian Navy divers in the 1970s. So in other words, a diving pedigree that is severely glossed over. For me, Certina probably is the most underrated brand on the affordable side of the Swatch Group portfolio, or overlooked, I should say, with a collection of attractive and well-positioned modern adaptations of its popular vintage diving designs, equipped with 80-hour power reserves, similar to what you'd find from other Swatch Group brands like Tissot, Hamilton, and Mito. In terms of specific models, the Orange Dial DS Super PH500M is a great place to start, offering a design format that stays close to the 70s ancestor, but updated with a sapphire crystal, better loom, and a variant of the aforementioned Powermatic 80 family of calibers. For its price range around $1,000, Certina is probably one of the most obscure but interesting places to look for heritage dive watches in particular. Although this next brand might not be able to call itself a definitive leader for its price segment, it is one that is severely overlooked, and that is Tudema. Formed in 1927 in the German watchmaking mecca of Glasuta, modern Tudema largely delivers on the utilitarian creations similar to the likes of Zinn, for example. Often overshadowed by their peer brand in Frankfurt, Tudema does have its own design lane and compelling price points represented by sports models like the M27Cs, a titanium 500 meter dive watch priced just over $2,000. In addition to its sportier offerings that are typically powered by third-party calibers, Tudema also dabbles in high watchmaking with the Time Only Patria collection released back in 2019, as well as an impressive minute repeater, which at the time of a release was quoted from Tudema as being the first modern full minute repeater ever designed and made in Glasuta. Part of the problem is definitely distribution, but Tudema's utilitarian Germanic designs, as well as their price points, are enough in my opinion for enthusiasts to do the extra legwork to check this brand out further. Next, we head to the neighboring country of Austria. Yes, Austria. Beautiful nation, but probably not one you consider when picturing the world of fine watchmaking. And you wouldn't be wrong to think that. But next we have one of my favorite independent brands that are available under $10,000, and that is Hobbring. Two. In order to understand the story arc of Hobring II, you must first understand the master watchmaker at the helm, Richard Hobring. During his time at IWC, Richard was responsible for a significant contribution to watchmaking by developing IWC's Doppel Chronograph using a module on the Valju 7750 in 1992, being first unveiled with the reference 3711. At the time of unveiling this creation, IWC was under the direction of Gunter Blumlein, a name that you might recognize as he was also one of the men responsible for reviving Elanga and Zona during the the 1990s. He later got Richard to make the jump over to work at Langa for years until starting his own brand with his wife Maria in 2004. With his own independent brand, Habring is producing extreme low production. We're talking about less than 100 units per year, showcasing much of the acumen he accumulated during his years with larger players. Habring is often known for their mono pusher chronographs like the Chrono Felix, and even have a deadbeat and a repeater within their repertoire. The designs themselves might not be for everybody, but Habring 2 is a brand deserving of a lot more recognition for some of their incredible work. 
Falling in a similar price range, we have one of the newer names on the block in the independent watchmaking scene, and that is Trilobe. Founded as recently as 2018 in Paris, France, Trilobe is an entire company based on a unique design format with their inventive three rotating concentric discs to display the hours, minutes, and seconds. Produced by Les Circles de Horlogers, I'm sure somebody in France just rolled over and died after that pronunciation, a Swiss boutique movement provider that also works with high horology mainstays like Speak Marin, for example. Trilobe the globe is underrated for a few reasons. For one, the dial display is truly one of a kind, and at least once you get used to it, it's surprisingly legible. Another point is the proprietary movement is well decorated and technically innovative for prices that start for less than $10,000. The Nuit Fantastique is the brand's newest standard design format with a well-finished titanium or gold case that is also available in either 38.5 millimeters or 40.5 millimeter case sizes with a starting price of $8,800. Now we jump back to Germany, specifically to Glasuta, for one of my favorite brands on the list, and that is Glasuta Original. Based in Germany, the history of Glasuta Original is complex yet paramount in the progression of watchmaking in the region. After the Second World War, the Soviet Union, which controlled the east part of Germany and therefore Glasuta, consolidated all of the watch companies operating in the town under one company referred to as the GUB. This state-owned enterprise was later allowed to be privatized in 1994, which led to the Glasuta Original that we know today. The brand is arguably most famous for its Pano collection, which can be easily identified by its asymmetrical dial that often draws comparison to Langa's Langa 1. Now, under the Swatch Group umbrella, Glasuta Original is underrated for its watchmaking prowess in comparison to the price point. Producing a wide range of in-house calibers with starting prices around $6,000 for their time-only 60s dress watches, or closer to $10,000 for the Panamatic Collection or Retro Diving Theme CQ. I would even argue that Geo produces some of the best finished movements, if not the best finished movements, under $10,000 with the engraved balance cock on the Panamatic Lunar that we reviewed earlier last year, providing backing to the claim. Now, it feels crazy to call Gerard Perigo underrated, given its history dates back to 1791, making it among one of the oldest brands in the industry. But juxtaposed against the modern high watchmaking landscape, I don't think GP gets anywhere near the respect it deserves for the watchmaking going on at the La Chute de based brand. In terms of the collection, GP spans from integrated sports models like the Laureato, an intriguing alternative to the Nautilus or Royal Oak, priced around $15,000 for their three-hand variant all the way up to the stratospheric world of high watchmaking, such as their La Esmeralda Turbion, with its unique triple bridge concept, a design stemming from their pocket watches of the late 19th century, which was also responsible for winning gold at the 1889 World Fair in Paris for an exhibition. As another example of pushing the boundary, we have their Cosmos, a piece that reflects the relation of life on Earth to the celestial bodies of the universe, showcasing two large ornate spheres, one emulating the Earth and the other zodiac signs. Of course, with these models priced at around $250,000 and the other $350,000 respectively, they aren't going to be the average enthusiast type of watch, but they do show the level of breadth and prowess of this 231-year-old brand. And finally, we have a brand that I think has big accomplishments on the horizon if they stay to the path, and that is Swiss-German base brand Armin Strom. Contrasting from our previous entry on this list, Armin Strom is a nascent brand based off of a 20th century watchmaker of the same name who specialized in skeletonizing movements for other makers. However, the modern story of Armin Strom as an independent brand starts in 2009 when a pair of young men who grew up frequenting Strom's workshop purchased the name and business. Located in the city of Beale, Armin Strom produces 98% of its movements in-house, including a number of rare technical complications while offering a wide flexibility for buyers on customizing certain elements of the watches they produce. The Pure Resonance, with prices starting around $50,000, is one of the very few resonance watches in the world, with the tech being more associated with FP Journe. Their form of resonance has an entrancing clutch spring that helps with the mirroring of oscillation of both the balances, which is really cool to see in practice. But the other part of the magic of Armstrom is their handmade and technically impressive watchmaking that is also available just a few thousand dollars more of the retail price of a Daytona, with the example being their Gravity Equal Force, a piece that has a beautiful bridge layout and constant force assistance with the barrel of the movement having a shaped Maltese cross to ensure a gradual distribution of energy to the balance to optimize energy consistency throughout the duration of the wind. But all right guys, that is my list of looking at some overlooked brands that should be on your 
radar and you probably should appreciate a little bit more. Of course, some of this is my opinion, uh, but I'm all about trying to showcase some other brands and trying to get out of the typical brands that most people talk about just because I think it is good. And that's really what ultimately what watches are all about for me. I think it's a point of self-expression and I think a watch is out there for pretty much everybody, no matter what your taste is. So these are seven brands that I would recommend checking out. If you like this style of video and you want us to do more of this, because we certainly could do another video or multiple parts of this series, uh, give it a thumbs up. It's a great indication. Definitely check out teddybaldeser.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to make all this content possible is through the store and selling watches. We don't take money from the brands that produce the content here. Uh, so if you wanna support the show, of course, you know, subscribing is great. But also in addition to that, if you are in the market for a watch, definitely check out teddyballasar.com. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.